Welcome to EHJ Today. My name is uh, Jeroen Bax. I work as clinical cardiologist in uh, Leiden, the Netherlands. Um, and I'm also currently the president of the European Society of Cardiology. I have the pleasure of uh, speaking today with Oliver Gemperly, who comes from Zurich Hospital in Switzerland. And we're going to discuss about what a clinician like Oliver is doing. So Oliver, in your field, you work in imaging, you work in clinical cardiology, and you work in interventional things. That's quite unusual that you cover all these areas. If you would be confronted with a patient that has chest pain, and as a clinical cardiologist, what would be your first questions that you would ask yourself? Well, um, to take your example, I think um, it's basically you cannot measure everything with the same uh, measurements. Uh, there are different kinds of patients, and I think one first question you have to ask yourself is what is the pretest probability for having coronary artery disease of this patient and then based on that you go on with different techniques i think in a patient which has a low to intermediate pretest probability what you want to know is really whether there is coronary artery disease or not whether the patient has coronary atherosclerosis or not whether you have to look for an alternative diagnosis and uh, there, for example, a good test in these uh, patients would be CT coronary angiography, which gives you a very nice uh, picture of the coronary arteries and uh, atherosclerosis, uh, if, if there's any, pr any present atherosclerosis. Right, so you say in this example, you would want an anatomical test to see if there is coronary atherosclerosis and possibly coronary stenosis. Yes, well, I, I mean, again, this is not a rule. Uh, if you look at the guidelines, you will not see any recommendation which tells you to do CT. But they tell you that CT in this range of pretest probability is a, very, is a test that performs very well and has particularly a very high negative predictive value. So if your CT shows you there's no coronary atherosclerosis, you can move on and look for alternative diagnosis. I agree, it's a good first line test. So now let us assume that in this specific patient you see a stenosis in the LAD. Now you take off your hat as clinical cardiologist and you are now the interventional cardiologist. And in that case, actually, would this be sufficient information for you to treat the patient or would you like to have more information? Well, in general, uh, Jerome, uh, anatomy is only one aspect of coronary artery disease and there's another very important aspect which is the functional uh, consequences of, uh, of a stenosis and you need both to, uh, to be able to decide on the most appropriate treatment. So there are different ways of approaching this. I mean if I'm very convinced based on all the clinical data and the CT that this is the stenosis that is causing ischemia and is causing the symptoms, you can move forward to do coronary angiography and you always have the possibility of doing FFR. But most of the times I would like to answer this question before I go into the cath lab. So I don't have to wonder whether I should or should not stent this lesion. And in this case, what you need to do is to add an additional functional test which tells you about the functional significance of this lesion. And if you have ischemia, then uh, uh, the most appropriate uh, thing to do probably is to revascularize the patient. So that brings together actually the anatomy that you've visualized on your CT scan and you then take a second step which is an ischemia test which would be the most logical ischemia tests that are most widely available um, in your place but also in other places. If you would choose two or three of those tests which are the ones that you that you think are most widely available? Well, that, that is again a difficult question and I don't want to go too much into the discussion of which test is better than the other. I think more important than this question is what is what you have, what do you have available in your center and where do, where do you have the best expertise? So I think there are people which are excellent with stress echocardiography and they can tell you everything from this. Uh, some people may have more experience with uh, nuclear tests like SPECT or PET and others are better with CMR. And I think uh, it doesn't really depend so much on what kind of modality or test you're using, but uh, rather than you actually do a test which tells you about the functional significance of lesions. I agree with you. That is probably integrating the information. Now, 
put on your head as a very advanced imager what you have in Zurich. You have a lot of possibilities in that center mm -hmm. and you use a lot of high-end imaging. What do you think in this specific patient, if we would like to comprehensively image the situation before we go to the CAT lab? Do we need to take sequential approaches or should we move into this so-called hybrid or fusion imaging? And is fusion imaging taking place with a bit from here and a bit from there? Or is fusion imaging something that you do with one machine? What do you see for the future is going to be the optimal fusion imaging technique? Jerome, as you know, I'm a big fan of hybrid imaging and I think uh, it's a fantastic technique to combine these two aspects. But I think we should also consider that these uh, tests are always associated with additional costs, additional radiation to the patient. So I would not want to propose hybrid imaging uh, for everyone. I think what you mentioned, a sequential approach where you have a tiered approach to testing the patient, maybe starting with a CT angiogram, in case of significant lesion, you go on to a functional test, is a very reasonable uh, way to, on one hand, have a full picture, but on the other hand, not expose the patient too much to unnecessary radiation. So uh, um, I think this would be a reasonable solution. And then it, when it comes to hybrid imaging, I think uh, the most long-standing techniques that have been fused together, as you also know, are for, for technical reasons, are SPECTS and CT or PET and CT because they are very similar, they are 3D technologies. But I think we're moving more and more into the field where we're actually combining other techniques as well. And I think pretty soon we will be able actually to uh, mix and match to combine many different techniques with each other. Uh, depending on the particular uh, demand, depending on the particular question uh, that uh, we want to know from the patient. Would it be logical to say that in the near future we do a very rapid uh, CT scan with a hybrid imaging machine and if there is something on that CT angiogram where we have questions that we do a PET perfusion study immediately with the same machine? Yes, I think this is a very good approach, a sequential approach, as you mentioned before. Um, and probably some centers are actually doing this approach. I think PET as well is an excellent technique to, assist, to assess myocardial perfusion. Uh, I think at the end, it, you, you know, it depends on your particular setup in your center because, I mean, you also run the risk that you have a very high-end CT that is combined with a PET and you want to use maybe that CT not only for cardiac purposes, maybe you want to run it with other studies as well, but you can't because it's blocked by a rather long PET study. So all these things um, you know, have to be considered when you buy your, uh, your machines at your center. And um, some centers with very high volume may prefer a hybrid scanner, others prefer to have it separate and you know, mix and match wherever they want. The hybrid imaging, I fully agree with you, is probably the step forward for the most comprehensive evaluation of the patient with chest pain um, to direct you relatively fast to an answer, should we go to the cat lab or not? The last question that I would like to ask you is a little bit look into the future. Do you think that one day we will be able to do everything with a CT scan alone, that we integrate the anatomy, we take the FFR, which can be assessed with the CT scan, and maybe even on top of that, the shear stress caused by certain lesions. Do you think that is close, or do you think that will take a couple of years before we are there? I think CT is really a very promising uh, tool. It has still a lot of potential, which has not been, is not being used yet, some of the things you mentioned. Uh, nonetheless, um, I, I don't personally, I don't have the feeling that there will be one uh, so-called one-stop shop. I think uh, if you look at the uh, development of the technologies, uh, there have always been fields where a technology was very strong and others where it was a bit weaker. And I would argue why not taking the strength of every technique instead of compromising for only one technique, uh, 
which may have its strengths like in anatomical imaging, but a bit less in functional imaging. Instead of that, I propose to really combine the technologies where we know they are uh, good for anatomical imaging, functional imaging, and really th this is what hybrid imaging is. Well, thank you, Oliver. I think as we started with, it's quite unusual that you combine clinics, intervention, and imaging in one person, but you do all that. And that gives you also a very good view on where the field is now and where the field is developing. You indicated that we are used to taking the best of each technique, and in the near future, we're probably gonna fuse that more and more. We can also sequentially do that rather than everything at the same time in the same patient, which is good because it lowers radiation. Um, and possibly you indicated that we could potentially work with one technique, um, although it remains to be proven if this is gonna give us all the information that we need. Thank you very much again. Thank you, John.